Well, a few tips for uh, those of you who are new to teaching. Teaching is a it's a great job. It's the great greatest job really um, anyone can have because uh, the medium is the human mind and spirit and every day you have the capacity to uh, change young people's lives but uh, it's not a job that everyone can do it's quite stressful uh, you need to have really good subject knowledge and you need the personality to dominate a group I'm going to give a few tips about teaching and classroom management particularly uh, talking about teaching can sometimes sound rather obvious but it's obviousness of a tricky kind you might say so let's begin with a few key pointers first of all remember teachers that you're there to uh, get pupils to learn something and that's how you're going to be judged do they learn something? You're not social workers. Uh, pupils must learn something new in every lesson and at the end of every lesson it's just as well to ask yourself that question. Secondly, the best teachers have really high expectations. They um, start with the assumption that everyone, even uh, the least able pupils in the class, are capable of getting an A-star if they're driven sufficiently hard. Thirdly, um, don't underestimate the importance of homework. You know, always set homework, plan it well in advance. Um, and remember that pupils copy each other, and so it's very important that you have regular tests to see whether they really know uh, the work. And if a pupil fails a test, that they have a retest and they keep going until they've passed it. Because remember, the key thing is that everyone uh, is capable of getting there in the end, if they're pushed hard enough. New teachers, don't try to be too friendly. What matters is not your relationship at the end of a particular lesson, but your relationship at the end of the year. Pupils have to be pushed hard. Um, they have to be pushed, some of them, to work harder and achieve the A-star standard, which is the aim. The best motivation for pupils is achievement. Vigorous, effective teaching leads to a uh, this achievement and this builds motivation. Uh, in stretch the more able, encourage the weak. Make out of the very ordinary student something out of the ordinary. Make that your greatest challenge. And the other thing in general to say to new teachers is pace yourself. You know, teaching is physically and intellectually and emotionally demanding. You'll get tired. So pace yourself and prepare well beforehand. That's what the holidays are for. Everything that can be done before the term begins, do it. Do it in the holidays. Um, some words about behaviour. It's really important to set high standards right from the start. Um, and not only of, you know, the sort of obvious things like people's talking to each other when they should be silent, but also in terms of only accepting good work. Uh, with behaviour, always use the minimum of force required and then gradually build up your response um, if that's necessary. Never attack the student if they've done bad work. Always attack the quality of their work. So don't say to a pupil, you know, you're lazy. That's attacking the pupil. Say, this work isn't good enough. You're capable of working harder and doing better. Be firm, be consistent, always be cross about late work. The more fuss you make about these sort of things, the less there'll be to fuss about. And the paradox is that firm control, good discipline, ultimately permits you to attend to individuals within the class because you can speak to an individual pupil at the front of the class and the others will be getting on with their work because they're behaving well and firm control also permits a good relationship with pupils so don't ever be afraid of being a bit strict. Now before you start um, let's think of a few things you need to have got organised. Um, first of all you need yourself to have good notes a star quality notes because um, that's what you're going to be teaching from. 
So the tools uh, that you need as you start to prepare yourself for your first lesson are you need the syllabus, the current syllabus downloaded directly from the um, exam board website. You need their sample papers with accompanying mark schemes, which you'll find on the website. You need past papers and their mark schemes, which repay careful study. Um, you need to get former mark scripts from your school. I mean, hopefully your school is getting back some marked scripts every year. Um, you need to get back coursework and have a look at coursework that's been done successfully and unsuccessfully by former pupils in your school. And then you'll need the standard text, the standard uh, books from which you're going to make your notes, including, um, if you're teaching GCSE or A-level, the exam board recommended books, which are obviously always very important. Then you need a mark book, um, and here's my mark book. Um, and in the mark book, you need to put uh, the pupil's uh, names, obviously, and um, their tutor, form teacher, their, something about their GCSE results, probably, indicate whether they're high or low ability. You need to indicate which um, pupils have special needs, uh, using some sort of code, which pupils have medical conditions. All of this needs to be noted in your mark book. And you'll see in my mark book I've also got, I've got a seating plan, which is very important. Um, for every piece of work I've said what it is, um, and you know some pieces of work are notes, and some are essays, and some are tests. And they're all different, and you may wish at the end of term in your reports to comment on different performance. I've made some notes about the work, which give me something to write about when it comes to end of term uh, reports. I've written down here um, commonly misspelt words from essays. That's also worth knowing um, because promoting good standards of literacy is so important. So you can get your mark book organised a little bit before the uh, term begins. The other thing you need is a diary. You need a good diary. And um, here's my diary. And in the diary, you're going to list the subjects that you're, uh, the classes that you're seeing, lesson by lesson. You're going to note um, those days when homework is due in. Um, you're going to note those days when homework has to be set. You're going to um, make a note if any pupil is missing from a class. So you're going to write down in the next lesson uh, that you need to see that pupil to make sure they've caught up the work they missed. If a pupil fails to produce some homework, then you're going to make a note of that again in the next lesson. Because you can't remember all of these things. You're teaching probably dozens, even hundreds of pupils. And so you have to write that sort of thing down in your diary. Otherwise, you're going to forget. So, you know, in my diary here, I've got, you know, written down things like um, uh, set this work, collect this essay, um, Receive, receive so-and-so's uh, um, late work, and so on. So you've got to have a diary, because none of us is going to be capable of remembering all of these things just off the top of our head. If a pupil has failed to produce work, you know, you need to be the sort of person who's never going to forget that in the next lesson you're taking that work in. You can also, before the term begins, start thinking about um, homework and... Wherever possible, try to set homework well in advance. Um, and all homework should be of the sort that it can normally be taken in and marked or tested one way or another. It's going to generate a mark because pupils are always going to pay much more attention to homework if they know that it's going to be marked and it's part of their assessment. Also, before the term begins, make sure all the equipment is working. You know how to use all the IT equipment. You've got pens which work, that sort of thing. Uh, you've got a stock of paper and files ready. Uh, and also very, very important is that you have a syllabus um, a print, printed out in advance, probably in a different colour, um, hole-punched, ready to give them. And you're going to insist that they put the syllabus 
at the very front of their file and it stays at the front of the file and every now and then you go to that syllabus and you get them to tick off the topics that you covered. So this gives them a sense of progress. And the other thing uh, you need to do before, really, before the term begins, and that is to put up some decent classroom displays, which are going to be useful to you and to your students. So um, these are all things to do before the first lesson begins. Then, then you come to your first lesson. Um, so this is what you need to do. You need to first of all be there when the students arrive, be there before them if possible, have that seating plan, get them to sit according to the seating plan, um, so you're in control. And at the beginning of the lesson, start clearly. Okay, now we're going to begin, we want absolute silence, you're going to quickly see who's here and not here, and you're going to note anyone who's absent in your mark book, so you have a clear record of the number of times they've been and haven't been at your lessons. You know, here in my, my, my mark book, that's what this column is for, little crosses, little crosses indicate that the pupil was missing. So I've, uh, uh, I've got a record of that. And I'll also write in my diary um, to speak to that person in the next lesson. So um, at the beginning of the lesson, they're quiet. You then state the aims, the aims of the lesson. And then you get going. Don't uh, allow the start of a lesson to uh, be too protracted. Don't wait for the very last person to arrive if they're, if they're obviously late. Start the lesson quickly with some sort of activity. You know, I'm now going to talk and you're going to make notes. You are going to do this exercise or we're going to run over what we did uh, in the last lesson, but we're going to get going. And every lesson has to have a strong sense of pace, of dynamism, of activity. There should be no moment when the students are just sort of sitting there passively. Try not to lecture too much. Ask questions by name. Don't ask pupils to put their hands up because it'll be the same two or three who always put their hands up. You ask by name. And your idea is that in every lesson, everyone will be asked a question if, if, if possible. And when you've asked a question, don't rush to give the uh, answer. Um, wait a bit. Um, if they can't get the answer, then get them to work together in pairs or threes until they have worked out the answer. Make sure your lesson has variety within it. Um, you know, it's quite normal to spend a little time making notes, and then a little time maybe showing a film clip, a little time where they do an exercise, a little more, more time when you're uh, giving them information and asking questions. And um, a difficult thing, of course, for those who are teaching humanities subjects is to know how to convey notes. It's very important that they have good notes. And you don't want to spend the whole term just writing notes on the board which they copy the copy down. So you've got to ideally have a bit of variety. There'll be some periods when you do write notes on the board, they copy them down. There'll be other periods when you give them handouts. Um, there'll be other periods when they're making notes from books and articles that you've given them. Now, pupils are very bad sometimes at making notes. They have to be shown how to make notes properly. And they also need to be shown um, how to keep their files in good order, because there's no point in making notes if you then lose them or you get them in random order. So it has to be spelled out to them that, you know, you're making notes and you keep them in a chronological order. And if you're making notes from a book from uh, at homework, that has to be kept separately from the chronological set of notes maybe that you're giving in class. And every now and then you should uh, have a period when you're going to check everyone's file to make sure that they are indeed keeping these notes in the good order that they most certainly need. And you need to insist on good headings um, and neatness so that they are the sort of notes that can easily be learnt, that form a picture on the page. Now sometimes, you know, you'll uh, do a test or a piece of work and you'll find that uh, there are two or three individuals who do appallingly badly. So you're going to need to see them. And it's not always possible to see pupils outside lesson time. Sometimes it is, sometimes it isn't. Um, so for those uh, individuals, the best thing really is to set everybody some work to be done in class, in silence, and then you call those individuals up to your desk one at a time and speak to them and give them 
um, you know, formative feedback, a bit of, a bit of uh, practical advice, how they can do better next time. When you're writing on uh, the uh, board, uh, electronic or whiteboard, then write clearly and neatly so everyone can see what you're doing. And as you approach the end of the lesson, you know, hopefully you'll have a clock at the back of the room so you don't have to look at your watch, you're glancing up at the clock and you can see you've got five minutes, maybe even ten minutes to go. Um, try to have finished everything by the time the bell goes. And there are often a couple of things that need to be done before the end of a lesson. You may want to summarise what has been learnt. Uh, you'll certainly want to set homework. And sometimes setting homework takes, you know, five minutes. It can easily take five minutes. Uh, setting the work, explaining what needs to be done, what you're going to be looking for when you come to market. And so plan that, uh, plan that in, in advance. Um, and so when the bell goes, you can say, right, uh, good morning, everybody, you may now depart. And if you run a calm, well-ordered classroom with, you know, an emphasis on high quality learning, you will be rewarded with good relationships and good exam results. Um, well, let's talk about... Uh, <coughs> Uh, exam results for a moment. I mean, the, there are a number of things you can do to help your, help your students get the best possible exam results. Uh, the best thing is to test them frequently every couple of weeks uh, under exam conditions, giving them plenty of notice so they've had time to revise, and uh, you give them a test, and you can certainly send the parents the results, uh, that G's them up a bit, but above all, there needs to be resits. There needs to be some, some penalty if a student scores below a certain mark, a satisfactory mark. And that has to be done, the resit, normally outside class time. So that's, um, that's a bore, but it's really important that they know that if they do badly in a test, they have to redo the work. And you're going to keep going until they reach the right standard. Otherwise, you know, students are just going to fall behind. Make maximum use of past papers and mark schemes. Use model answers, maybe from those mark schemes, where students can compare their work against a really good answer. Check their notes frequently with coursework. Um, the thing about coursework is that if you set a large project and just leave them to get on with it, there'll be a group of students who just do nothing for weeks uh, on end. So coursework has to be divided up into small chunks of work which are checked regularly um, and that uh, you need to insist on high standards. Set holiday work always and be very firm, be very strict about the standard of, of work that they produce. Um, one or two words about marking. Students are always very quick to judge a teacher by his or her, her care in correcting their written work and your promptness in returning it. And the aim is to uh, set and mark and return at least one piece of written work to every pupil every week. And if you're teaching towards a GCSE or an A-level, then it's a good idea if each piece of work has a GCSE or A grade, A-level grade attached to it. Always correct poor English. Incorrect spellings should be written out by you correctly in the margin and then as the work is handed back the student should be asked to write them out three times not as a punishment not as a punishment because it's the only way they're going to learn um, return work at the start of the lesson normally and then go over it and give individual comments to these sixth formers while they're while the rest are working on a task try to give Detailed comments on the work when it's returned, explaining how they can improve. Teachers waste an awful lot of time doing ticks and crosses and writing things and, and the students don't look at it. So you've got to make sure that your marking generates some sort of improved learning f by the uh, students. And that means um, that they've got to have a bit of time, if you like, to look at what you've written and ideally uh, make corrections, improve their work 
so that they're thinking about the comments that you've taken the trouble to write. Keep accurate records of marks for each piece of work. Um, collect the work in individually and immediately identify any people who hasn't handed in the work that was set. Um, and relentlessly pursue work which is late. And if that is done early in the year, then you will be known as being the sort of teacher that always notices, always notices if a piece of work is late or unfinished and always reacts. And if you do that, uh, then the chances of the pupil repeating his mistake or her mistake are greatly uh, reduced. Um, so, once again, you know, if you make a fuss early on, you'll have much less to fuss about as the year proceeds.